Will the booster shot be worth it? Hi, I'm Chris Masterjohn, and I have a PhD in nutritional sciences. I am not a medical doctor, and nothing contained in this episode may be construed as medical or nutritional advice of any kind or a substitute, therefore. This episode is meant purely as scientific education. If you wish to act on any ideas presented in this episode, please consult your physician first and never take anything herein as a reason to contradict medical advice. With that said, enjoy the episode. Anonymous says, Dr. CMJ, could you provide your opinion about whether you believe the COVID vaccine booster shot is worth getting for those of us who are currently fully vaccinated? Well, I don't know where you're living, but right now it's illegal to get a COVID a booster vaccine if you're fully vaccinated uh, in the United States. So I, are you asking from Israel or somewhere where it's legal to get the booster? Um <laughs> Because right now, the in the United States, uh, and I I know that there's um, plenty of people who are not in the United States uh, in here. I just don't know where you're where you're from. But so um, you know, typically my audience is probably going to be fifty five, sixty percent U.S. So in the United States, I can say that uh, the boosters are only EUA status. The Pfizer booster is EUA status for immunocompromised people and is not legal for anyone else. Um, and so that could change. Now, you're asking about worth getting. Well, uh, that really depends on how you look at it. So first of all, all the data on declining efficacy, efficacy is from the Pfizer vaccine. And... That doesn't mean that the other vaccines don't have declining efficacy over time, but they certainly seem to be more durable than the Pfizer vaccine. And so that, you know, that's why Israel is is where you get all this, you know, that's where you get like real serious data about declining efficacy, because that's where pretty much everyone's vaccinated with Pfizer. Um and so, you know, is like why would Moderna not have declining efficacy? Presumably, it's because it's a higher dose and causes a greater immunostimulation at the you know at the initial uh, two doses, and so presumably it has the exact same characteristics that Pfizer has in declining efficacy, but it overshoots the it sort of you know presumably Pfizer maxes out F, the the efficacy you can get from an mRNA vaccine at the initial dosing. By initial dosing, I mean the first two doses, the non-booster doses. So presumably Pfizer sort of, they they have the dose of mRNA that provides the maximal efficacy, by which I mean the maximal, not the maximal immuno response, but to the degree of a vaccine, an mRNA vaccine-induced immuno response can generate decreased effic- uh decreased case counts symptomatic case counts and serious illness Pfizer had just maxed that out so moderna has overshot the dose which uh i'm not 100% sure this is true but it, from what i heard that this uh is with the intent of having less rigorous storage conditions so i don't know how much the dose is increased by the time it's shot into someone's arm, but uh, presumably if it's uh, stored less rigorously, and I don't know whether that's true, but if it is, then presumably the, d- the dose is more variable. Um, but in any case, presumably on average, it's higher. Um, and so maybe you get a higher immune response where you don't, there is no obvious increase in efficacy at the 21 day time point um or at the 28 day or um you know if it's tw- if the doses are 21 days apart at the and you're looking at 14 days after the second dose at the um 35 day time point um you know but maybe at the 6 month time point you're going to see that difference because the lower dose of Pfizer made the durability lower made the declining efficacy more apparent at the 6 month mark and not for Moderna but if that's the case, I would think that at the one-year mark, you're going to see the declining efficacy with Moderna. Um, and we just haven't gotten there yet. 
and then I don't know why you wouldn't see, uh, you know, it might be the same exact thing with, with the other vaccines. Um, like the, uh, adenoviral vector ones are probably, you know, they're basically doing more or less the same thing with trying to get the spike protein, et cetera. So I don't know why they would be any difference with the declining efficacy. It just, uh, might be that they're producing a higher dose in Pfizer, a higher spike protein response in Pfizer. And so therefore also it is taking longer to see their declining efficacy. Um, so, you know, if your priority is maintaining maximum efficacy of your vaccination, then with Pfizer, you're going to have to have the booster. And with the others, you're probably going to have to have the booster, um, you know, but not for, but not until later, right? So with Pfizer, maybe the booster is justified at the six to 12 month mark, depending on what your threshold is of when, you know, what case protection you need. Um, I mean, if you, if your, if your only priority was you wanted to keep it as high as possible, you really should be getting the Pfizer vaccine every four months uh, because the, the decline in efficacy is very apparent at the four month mark. Um, you know, but if if your goal is I just want to maintain higher than X percentage protection against getting infected or serious illness, then you know maybe you're you're looking more at the six to twelve month mark and later for the other vaccines for the boosters. However, if your priority is you want to do what's shown to be safe, then you should never get the booster <laughs> because. Uh, once you're talking about a three-dose regimen, you're firmly outside what has been tested in any of the clinical trials, and you are firmly outside of what will ever be tested in any of the clinical trials. Um, because even with the two-dose regimen, you, even with Pfizer, right, the phase two trial data is out as a preprint now. And they're doing a phase one, phase two, phase three study, which means that the phase three results are just going to be the same exact trial, but the later results. Um, but those aren't released yet. But if you look at the phase two results, they say we unblinded the study and we vaccinated the whole control group already, but we were able to collect data from somewhere between four to six months after vaccination for people during the blinded controlled period of the study. But what that means is that the phase three results for the two dose regimen are not going to be placebo controlled blinded. Uh, they're not going to be placebo controlled or blinded when they come out. So how on earth are they ever going to have any placebo controlled blinded trial data with the booster shots? Uh, I mean, I guess they can do, uh, I guess they can take the two dose people and randomize them to booster shot versus not. I guess they can do that. <laughs> but you also have to consider that you are now firmly in. If you're talking about three doses over like an 12, 18 month period, for example, you're now firmly in the camp of the Deng vaccine where they had a three-dose regimen over an 18-month period, and they vaccinated 700,000 Filipino kids, and they went through two and a half to three years before they got a, an ADE signal, antibody-dependent enhancement, uh, which is a process where the antibodies generated by infection or vaccine can make the clinical severity of the disease worse. Um, and it took them two and a half to three years to get a signal for that, and uh, that, you know, turned out that if you hadn't gotten Deng before you got the vaccine and you got the vaccine and then you got Deng later, you had a much more severe case of Deng than you would have had otherwise. Um, and so even if they do, uh, in RC, and I don't think they will, but even if they do an RCT of, you know, take fully vaccinated people and randomize them to booster or not to look at safety when are they going to end it at the six month mark? Uh, in which case we're not really out of the woods in terms of 
what a three dose over 18 month regimen regimen might take to show the ADE signal as in the case of Deng. Um, and then of course, like when are they going to start this trial? I guess they could do it as an evolution out of the phase one, two, three trial. I guess they, you know, I guess they don't have to do recruitment anymore. They take those people and randomize them to booster or not. So I would get it done sooner, but I mean, if they're not testing this now and they got to have to get six month results out of it and those aren't enough, when are you going to get your booster? <laughs> so from the perspective of efficacy, so to summarize, from the perspective of efficacy, then with Pfizer, I think you need the booster. And if you're trying to maximum, keep efficacy at the maximum, you need it every three or four months. But if you're trying to just prevent uh, efficacy from dropping below a certain critical threshold, maybe you get it every six to 12 months. I personally would predict that you will probably need the booster with uh, Moderna, AstraZeneca, et cetera, uh, but only time will tell. And then from the perspective of safety, I think the safety of the booster is going to be very questionable because we're not going to have trial data on it. We might not, never have trial data on it. Uh, and we're probably going to have to re rely on observational safety data. And I would think a three dose regimen is now going to take longer of what, you know, would be reasonable data collection time. Uh, and so if you're, you're going to have to make a choice between whether you're optimizing for efficacy or safety. And uh, if you're optimizing for safety, you should be more skeptical of the, of the, um, booster and if you're optimizing for efficacy then you should be more quick to get the booster but it's you know only demonstrated need is with Pfizer um but i think time will show us that you, uh you're going to have declined efficacy on all of these and it just might be a different schedule um so maybe if you're fully vaccinated with a non Pfizer vaccine you can wait longer <laughs> at, until there's more data or something like that but uh, but that's my thoughts on that. So I hope that helps Anonymous. This episode was part of a Q&A for members of the CMJ Masterpass, where I hold monthly private Zoom Q&As for my members. The Masterpass also serves as a buyer's club with exclusive and massive discounts on your favorite premium foods and health products, including pasture-raised and wild meat and seafood, supplements, sleep accessories, water filters, phototherapy devices, and much more. If you'd like to participate in these Q&As, you can join the Masterpass at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash masterpass and use the code Q&A, spelled Q-A-N-D-A, Q&A, for 10% lifetime discount. I am currently working full-time on finishing my first book, Vitamins and Minerals 101, How to Get the Nutrients You Need on Any Diet. I will let you know when I have a release date. In the meantime, you can pre-order the book at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash book. Testing Nutritional Status, The Ultimate Cheat Sheet, has been newly released as version 1.3. This is my comprehensive system for managing nutritional status with lab tests, dietary analysis, and comprehensive intake of your signs and symptoms. The new version has a comprehensive guide to interpreting the Genova methylation panel. You can pick up your copy at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash cheat sheet. In my consulting, I am neither a medical practitioner nor a coach. I serve as your data analyst and your strategist. I teach you scientific principles of health and wellness, help you analyze your data, and help brainstorm actionable strategies. You can sign up for a consultation at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash consultations. Please consider supporting my work at no extra cost to you by visiting my support page and making a purchase with one of my affiliate links. Some of my most popular affiliates are also listed in the description of this video with links that will give me credit for your purchase. I will try to respond to comments when I can, but my presence will be intermittent while I'm finishing my book. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next episode.